So in this first video, we're going to be talking about using the arrow keys to navigate a document. Right now, I'm on the desktop of my Mac, and I'm going to open a Pages document where I've written out the narration from Apple's famous 1997 Think Different campaign. So I'm going to open that with VO space. Open Think Different Pages image. Pages. Think Different Pages window. Body. Edit text insertion at beginning of text. Here's to the crazy ones. The misfits. The people. As you may have heard, VoiceOver tells me that page is open. I'm in the think different.pages document in a new window that I'm in the body of the document and that I am editing that text with my insertion point or text cursor at the beginning of the document. Now I press the control key after that point to pause VoiceOver. But if I hadn't, it would have continued reading the entire text in the body of this document from the beginning to the very end. But we want to read through this document a little slower and with a lot more control. So let's orientate ourselves to the document and learn some of the basic controls for moving around a word processor. So now we are at the very beginning of this document, since VoiceOver said insertion at beginning of text. So that puts us before the first word in the first line of text. So if we press the down arrow, we will move to the second line of text and VoiceOver will read us that line. The round pegs in the square holes. The ones who see things. And if we press the up arrow, we will move back up to the first line of text, and VoiceOver will read that one to us. Here's to the crazy ones. The misfits. The people. The troublemakers. Now we press the right arrow, we will move one character at a time. H. E. R. E. Pressing the left arrow will move us one character backwards for each key press. E. R. E. H. So that is what the arrow keys do by themselves. But before we move on, there's one more thing worth mentioning. As we move from one character to the next character with the right and left keys, for editing purposes, we need to know when VoiceOver reads that character out loud. Is the text cursor in front of that character or behind it? Let me give an example. The first word of this document is the word hears, written H-E-R-E apostrophe S. But let's say we instead wanted here is. So we need to add a space after the word here, remove the apostrophe, and replace it with the letter I to turn apostrophe S into I-S. For is. So first I want to move my text cursor between the E at the end of here and the apostrophe. So I press the right arrow to move character by character till I hear the second E. H E R E. So is the text cursor now before or after that second E? The answer is after the letter E. When you press the right arrow and you hear the letter spoken, the text cursor is always to the right of that spoken letter. So if I press space, I will get a space after the letter E. Space. So now I want to find the apostrophe. Let's press the right arrow key again. Right single quotation mark. I hear the word right single quotation mark. You may hear the word apostrophe. It's going to treat it the same way. So now I know the text cursor is after that apostrophe. I want to delete it. So I'm going to press the delete key. Right single quotation mark. Quick note to Windows users here. The delete key on the Mac is known as the backspace key in Windows. So now that the apostrophe is gone, I want to replace it with the letter I. But as tends to happen, I, I may have lost track of exactly where I am. And I want to make sure my I comes before the S that I know is already there somewhere. So in that case, I might press the right arrow key again to see what letter's there. S. Okay, here is that letter S I want to turn into the word is. 
Since I just heard S after pressing the right arrow, I know that the text cursor is after the letter S. I need the text cursor to be before the letter S so I can add that letter I and transform it into is. So as you probably might have guessed, I'm going to need to press the left arrow key. S. So we just heard the letter S after pressing the left arrow key. What just happened? Do we have two letter S's? And where did the text cursor go now? Well, let me explain. Before we pressed the left arrow key, we had the text cursor after the letter S, or in other words, to the right of the letter S. When we pressed the left arrow, it moved the text cursor from the right of the letter S to the left of the exact same letter S. So the text cursor is now before the S, and VoiceOver was announcing that move by simply saying S. So now if I press I, we will add that letter before the letter S and get the word is. I. So to be more direct, when I press the right arrow, S space T O, the text cursor is to the right of the character that it announces. And when we press the left arrow, O T space S I, the text cursor is to the left of the character it announces. So right is right, and left is left. I'm going to put myself back at the beginning. Space, E, R, E, H. So now let's talk about making those arrow keys more powerful by adding a modifier key. You can modify what the arrow keys do by holding down either the command key or the option key. Both have different effects. Let's start with the command key. When you hold the command key and press the up arrow, beginning of text, the text cursor is moved to the beginning of your document and is placed in front of the first word. When you hold the command key and press the down arrow, jobs, the text cursor is moved to the end of the document after the final word. Let's go back to the beginning of the document by pressing command and up arrow key again. Here. Now let's try the command key with the right and left arrow keys. When you hold command and press right, B. the text cursor moves to the end of the current line of text and announces the following word. If you hold the command key and press the left arrow, here, the text cursor moves to the beginning of the current line of text and announces the first word. So the command key moves the text cursor to the very edges of your document in the direction that you press the arrow keys. So pressing command down takes you to the end of the document. Command up takes you to the beginning of your document. Command right takes you to the end of the current line and command left takes you to the beginning of the current line. Now let's talk about using the option key. First, I'm gonna press command up to go back to the beginning of this document. Beginning of text. Let's start with using the option key with the left and right arrow keys. When you hold down the option key and press the right arrow. Here is two. B. With each press, you will hear each word of your document read one at a time. Option in the right arrow will move the text cursor word by word. The text cursor will be placed at the end or on the right side of each word it has spoken. So if you want to replace a word, you can use the option right arrow to find the word you want to remove. Crazy ones, the misfits, the people. Now you can use the delete key to remove the word. E L P O E P. Then type your new word. R E B E L S. When I hold the option key and press the left arrow, you also move word by word. Rebels, the misfits, the ones, crazy, the. But this time the text cursor is before or to the left of the word. Finally, let's talk about using the option key with the up and down arrow keys. 
When you hold Option and press down, ones who do, you will hear the last line of the current paragraph spoken out loud. The text cursor is placed at the end of the last word in the paragraph. If I press it again, which was narrated by Steve Jobs, you'll be brought to the end of the following paragraph, and so on. If we hold the Option key and press the up arrow, this is the original narration for Apple's Think Different commercial. You'll hear the first line of the current paragraph read out loud, and the text cursor will be placed at the beginning of the first word. If you press it again, here is to the crazy ones, the misfits, the rebels, the troublemakers. You'll be brought to the beginning of the previous paragraph, and so on. So the option key left and right navigates word by word, and the option key up and down moves you paragraph by paragraph. That covers the basic navigation using the arrow keys. You might have noticed that we didn't use the VO keys. That's because the shortcut keys we used are universal on the Mac and can be used by non-voiceover users in the same exact way, but without the audio feedback. All the skills you learned today will come into play in our following segments. Future topics will include making selections, adjusting verbosity, proofreading tips and tricks, and more.